for that. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. So let's pray. I thank you, Father God, that you will speak through my mouth your words, which are anointed to touch hearts and to transform lives for your glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Breakthrough. So in the dictionary, breakthrough means a sudden advance or a successful development. Words related to breakthrough can be to boost, to increase, to strengthen, to upgrade, to uplift, to expand a gestation like a growing or a birthing within us, a ripening, a discovery, a windfall, an invention or a revival, bringing those dead things back to life. There may be dreams or visions that you have pushed down and that you've forgotten about deep down in your hearts, but I feel God wants to revive them and he wants you to break through and take a hold of them. So the opposite to breakthrough is a setback or a stumbling block, a weakening or a worsening, to draw back or to impair or a shortcoming. So there's two more definitions of breakthrough in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, and it says, number one, warfare, an offensive military assault that penetrates and carries beyond a defensive line. And number two states, an act or an instant of moving through or beyond an obstacle. So prayer is our offensive weapon that fights the enemy as he tries to come against us and our family and the community around us. We are to stand in the gap and pray as intercessors for God's will and power and for his purpose to prevail and to keep standing even when it gets hard and even when we don't see the breakthrough, to keep striking the ground in prayer until we see that breakthrough. No matter how many times we've prayed for that thing or that for that to happen before. So in James 4 verse 7, in the Amplified Version, it says, So submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God with a contrite heart. A contrite heart is a heart that has been crushed, that has been bruised, but is pliable in his hands. It's a humble heart, and he will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your unfaithful hearts, you double-minded people. But I like this version. It's God's Word translation. It says, Come close to God, and He will come close to you. Clean up your lives, you sinners, and clear your minds, you doubters. So doubt and unbelief can be an obstacle or a hindrance to breakthrough in our lives. I'm just going to read the story about Jairus' daughter in Mark 5, verse 36, in the Passion Translation. So you can follow me with me in your Bible if you like. And before he had finished speaking, people arrived at Jairus' house and pushed through the crowd to give Jairus the news. There's no need to trouble the master any longer. Your daughter has died. But Jesus refused to listen to what they were told and said to the Jewish official, don't yield to fear. All you need to do is keep on believing. That's why I have this here today. Only believe and you shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Just believe. It goes further on into the story. He took the child's father and mother and his three disciples and went into the room where the girl was lying. He tenderly clasped the child's hand in his and said to her in Aramaic, Talifa Kumi, which means little girl, wake up from the sleep of death. Instantly, the 12-year-old girl sat up, stood to her feet and started walking around the room. Everyone was overcome with astonishment in seeing this miracle. Jesus had them bring her something to eat and he repeatedly cautioned them that they would tell no one about what had happened. In the footnotes in the Passion Translation, it says that the Aramaic word talifa can also mean little lamb, and that the Greek word used here is kurasian, which is similar to sweetheart. So Jesus' tenderness was apparent. He called this little girl sweetheart. He calls us as sons and daughters sweethearts and 
and lovely young men. So it also goes on to say that the Hebrew scholars find in the word talifa, a Hebrew root, which could point to the talit or a prayer cloak of Jesus. And so it, that would make this say, little girl under the prayer cloak, arise. That fringed talit had already been touched by a woman who had received her healing previously in the chapter. You know, the woman with the issue of blood, that it took 12 years and then she finally reached out and Jesus healed her because her faith made her whole. She took it by the hand, reached forward and she got her breakthrough. So we need to only believe that we have been given the same power and the same authority to do miracles today and even greater thing in Jesus' name. We are cloaked in Jesus. And as we arise and break through in prayer, we break through because of Him. So just picture this when you pray, that Jesus is around you like that prayer cloak. He's around you, He's in you, and He works through you. So whenever you pray, just have that picture come around your mind. So another obstacle or a blockage to breakthrough can be unforgiveness. Being an offended and hurt by others can happen all the time in many different circumstances and situations. But if you hold on to that offence, it can cause bitterness and resentment and it can cause sickness and dis-ease in our bodies. We have to learn to live unoffendable, to let people's words and opinions just fall off our backs like water off a duck's back. And don't let it penetrate your heart. You need to guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or a group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting or condoning or excusing the offence. It just releases you from the effects of carrying that weight around on your shoulders. So in Matthew 6, verse 14 to 15, it says, And when you pray, make sure you forgive the faults of others so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you withhold forgiveness from others, your Father withholds forgiveness from you. We also sometimes need to forgive God for thinking that he wasn't there when bad things have happened. How many people say, well, if there was a God, how come these bad things happen? But he is right there with you when these things happen. Even if you ask him in prayer to show you where he was, you'll see that he's right there. He was right there in the room with you. And it made him cry as well. So you may also need to forgive yourself for something that may have happened in your life. And you took the blame for it. Release yourself today by letting go and removing that cloak of shame. And give these people over to God. For he says in Romans 12 verse 19, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath and his judicial righteousness. For it is written in scripture, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, in the Passion Translation it says, Now if anyone is enfolded into Christ, He has become an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. This verse talks about when we receive Jesus, we become new people on the inside. Jesus' blood has cleansed us from all sin. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, But if we freely admit our sins when his light uncovers them, He will be faithful to forgive us every time. God is just to forgive us our sins because of Jesus Christ. And he'll continue to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So breakthrough is a journey. As we release more and more of ourselves to Jesus, our old ways of being and doing change as well. This change in us is supernatural and permanent. But sometimes we'll slip up and make mistakes because we are human But Jesus is right there (laughs) with open arms to receive us again and again and again. And as we repent and say sorry, we keep going forward with him. There is nothing that you have ever done 
that will stop him from loving and receiving you today. He wants to meet you right where you're at. I love that song by Cody Carnes. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again. Yeah, so I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I'll run to the Father again and again and again. He is right there, even today, no matter what you've done. I know I've said that, but I just feel him drawing and drawing you. No matter what you've done, he's right there with open arms today. So as a prophetic activation today, I'd like you to stand up. Sorry, <laughs> you might have been just getting comfy. And to step forward or step sideways. I don't know if you can step forward, but take a step forward in significance of breaking through the old things to step into the new. See yourself taking off that old heavy cloak of shame and unforgiveness and putting on Jesus's cloak, his prayer covering over you. See yourself receiving Holy Spirit fullness and power from on high. Thank you, Father. So just receive that today, each and every one. Just receive that, that fresh and new mantle, that anointing that just breaks every yoke. I see it as a picture of Lazarus, that he called Lazarus to arise. And as he did, he still had his grave clothes on. But I see him as he unraveled, unraveled Lazarus's grave clothes. He made him fresh and new. Just see him unraveling all those old things off you today. Actually, another activation is just turn around. Do a turn like that. I work with children. <laughs> you know, we can, you can sit down now. <laughs> I just wanted to share, as Pastor Messi mentioned, I went to Sydney last week with my husband and we stayed at the Rocks. And it has so much history from our Australian past. There were so many old buildings that had been restored and there were some buildings that had new buildings built on top of them. And there's also so many brand new buildings. But um, the buildings that had solid foundations were the ones that have lasted. So one of our foundations of our faith is the Word of God, which we need to learn by reading and studying to grasp a basic understanding of God. But I believe the next foundation is receiving the Holy Spirit who brings life and revelations to that Word of God. It is Pentecost Sunday today. Woo! <laughs> so in Acts 1 verse 8, it says, But I promise you this, that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be filled with power. In Acts 2 1, it said, On the day of Pentecost, when it was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in the one place. And suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house from out of the heavenly realm. The roar of the wind was so overpowering, it was all anyone could bear. Then all at once a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. They were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired to speak in languages that they had never learned. The Holy Spirit equips and empowers us to be bold and courageous witnesses for Him. In this perverse generation, it is His dunamis, dynamic, wonder-working power that enables us to see the miraculous today. People are healed, set free and delivered in His mighty name as we are constantly refilled and refreshed by the Holy Spirit. And it is an everyday refilling and a refreshing, not just a one-off feeling. So say this after me today. I am a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away and all things have become fresh and new. 
So I receive Holy Spirit fullness today in Jesus' powerful and mighty name. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love Kim Smith. Share this with somebody. Amen. Let them be encouraged today. Hallelujah. She has a pastor's heart and it just comes through in her ministering um, so well. Amen. Amen. See you later. Bye.